What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to talk about three-dimensional plotting in Matplotlib, which means that we're going to make visualizations in three dimensions rather than only two dimensions. And I have made a video on this already on my channel. It's quite old, it's part of the data science tutorial series. Uh, it's low quality, so I'm going to make a new video here with more information, with better quality and better explanations. So let's get right into it. We're going to start by importing matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And we're going to also import numpy as np. Now we're going to use numpy mainly for the generation of data. We're not going to plot actual data. We're going to generate data using numpy. And we're going to use obviously matplotlib for the plotting. Now one thing that you might want to or might have to import, I'm not sure, sometimes I needed it, sometimes I don't need it. Now, in the last try, I did need it, so I don't know if it's actually necessary, but we're going to import from MPL underscore toolkits, we're going to import mplot3d. Now again, the syntax highlighting is going to show that we're actually not using it, and sometimes if I remove it, it works. Sometimes it says, okay, I don't know the projection 3D, and it doesn't work, so for some reason, uh, I'm not sure if we need that or not, but if you want to make sure that it works, then you want to import this as well. It's part of Matplotlib, and of course, as always, if you don't have Matplotlib installed, then you're going to say pip install Matplotlib and NumPy like that. All right, so those are the imports, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about plotting single three-dimensional points. In order to do that, obviously, we just have to specify coordinates. But before we can actually start plotting in three dimensions, we need to create an axis. Uh, and this axis has to have a 3D projection. Now we have different projections, we don't have only uh, 3D, there is in the Matplotlib documentation, I think, uh, a large list of different projections that we can use. Uh, but if you want to create a new axis, you basically say AX or whatever you want equals plt dot axes, and then the projection, in this case is going to be 3D. Now the projection, uh, is basically the type of coordinate system. You have the basic default, which is the two dimensions. We have three dimensional and we have certain specific kinds of plots for different scientific purposes or anything like that. Uh, however, we are going to pick 3D and then we're going to just say ax.scatter, so the basic scatter function. And this time we provide three coordinates, not just two. So we have x, y, and z. Let's say three, five, seven, for example, and then plt show. We're going to click on run and we're going to hopefully see a three dimensional plot. Now I'm not going to rotate too much here because when I'm recording and I'm using map a little bit at the same time, uh, it's usually very laggy, but you can also move this around here. As you can see, it's lagging. I hope my recording is not crashing on me here. Uh, but basically we can turn this around. We can look at it from different perspectives. You can see the coordinates here and this is the point that we actually plotted. So I'm not going to rotate too much throughout this video, but that's how you do it. You just use the mouse. Um, and that's how you plot a single point. Now, if you want to make a scatter plot based on multiple arrays of individual coordinates, we're going to just say scatter plots here we are going to create a new axis here as well. Or actually, we don't have to do all of this in a row. Let's just replace this with uh, with new code. We're going to again do plt axis projection 3D. And then we're going to say x data equals np a range. And a range is basically you choose a starting point, you choose an endpoint and then the step size. It's not like lint space and lint space, you choose a starting point, an endpoint, and then how many values you want to generate in between. Here we specify the step size. So this would mean uh, start from zero and with a step size of 0 0.1 increase until you get to 50. We're going to do that for X. We're going to then uh, also generate Y data the same way. Uh, or actually, let's do it in a different way. Let's say x data equals np dot because we don't want to have a structure, we want to have some random stuff here. So we're going to say np random dot rand int from zero to 100. We want to have the shape 500 uh, like that. So basically one dimensional. Uh, and then we're going to do the same thing for the y data for the z data. And yeah, that's basically just 100 uh, or just 500 
random points. And for this, we're just going to say ax dot scatter x data, y data, z data, like that. And of course, plt dot show. So that should look quite messy. Now. There you go. Again, we can rotate, but it's going to be laggy. But here you can see the individual data points. So this is a very basic scatter plot. And of course, we can do the same thing as always. Now I'm not sure what the individual parameters were. Was it marker? Or was it M? I'm not sure. Let's just try with with marker, but I think it was M or something. No, there you go. It was actually marker. So you can change the marker, you can change the color map, you can change the alpha value. So we can say alpha equals 0 0.1. I mean, I think this should work here. There you go, then we have more transparency here. Uh, so you can customize it like an ordinary 2d plot, but it's in three dimension, uh, three dimensions now. Now let's say we don't want to plot points, we want to plot, let's say a function. So we have some input values x and y and we want to have a function on the z coordinate. If you want to do that, of course, let's just not delete all of this. Let's just delete this. We're going to now say x data equals np a range from zero to 100 shape 500. This makes more sense here because we want to have an uh, Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm stupid, a range 0 50 and 0 0.1. This was what I wanted to do. Uh, in this case, it makes more sense because of course, we want to have equally uh, sized ticks on the x and y coordinates. And then the z coordinate should be the result of whatever calculation we choose to make. So we can say z data is basically just x data times y data, a very simple function. And if we do that, we can say uh, peel or actually axis dot um, was it scatter? Actually, we should probably go with plot. But let's see with scatter, it works as well. But it's more like a collection of points on a line. But I see that in my prepared code, for some reason, I used scatter, I think this is a mistake, I think plot is actually the better function here. Uh, you can see here that we have a function, but it's actually consisting of um, can I zoom in here? Come on. However, you can see it's individual points. If you look closely, you can see it's not actually aligned. So I think this should be uh, easy to fix by just using plot, but I'm not sure since this is not the code I prepared here. It's a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Obviously, it works better if you choose plot because then it's actually plotting a line. Um, so this, of course, is also not true here. So this is basically plotting a function. Now you can choose whatever function you want. You can, of course, also say np dot sign of x data times np dot cosine of y data, for example, and then you'll get a different function. Obviously, there you go in three dimensions. Uh, but that's how you do a basic function or how you plot a basic function along an axis. Now one thing that I also want to do here before we get to the next uh, topic, which are surface plots, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about customization, because of course, we always want to have some titles and labels and all that. And that is not too different from what we usually do, you basically plot something and then you say, ax dot set underscore title, and then we can say, okay, I don't know, uh, funny function could be the title. And then I can say ax dot set underscore x label. And this is going to be my x values in centimeters, for example, then we can go with my y label, or my y values in I don't know, vault. And then we can say my fancy results in, in this case, I don't know, centimeters times vault doesn't really make sense. However, we're going to do it like that. Just so we have something and then we can show that. And you will see that we have some labels here as well. All right, now let us get to the more interesting stuff and talk about surface plots. This means that we're not just going to plot individual lines in three dimensions, but we're going to actually plot the whole surface of the function. Because up until now, what we did is let's say those are the x values one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on are also the y values. What we did up until now is let's say the function was z equals x times y, what we did actually was not 
computing the whole function for a surface plot, we just took the individual positions and combined them. So one times one is one, two times two is four, three times three is nine, then 16, 25, 36, 49, and so on. Um, this is basically what we did. It was just taking the individual positions and combining them together. However, in order to plot the full function as a surface, we need to combine all the values of x with all the values of y. So we have to take 1 times 1, 1 times 2, 1 times 3, and so on, until we have all the values, and then we have one row of the z-coordinates. And this is what we're going to do now. We're going to create a so-called mesh grid, or we're going to use a mesh grid function to create a grid of the values so that we have basically for each element in y we have a row with all the elements in x so that we can then combine them in z together so that we have this final grid of the results and we can use this grid to plot a surface plot in the end. I hope this was somewhat understandable. Basically we would have something like that. We would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and then 1, 2, 3 or actually let's just copy that. Uh, that would be, for example, the mesh grid of x, and then we would have, if the values are the same, obviously, we would have the same thing for y, and then when we combine them, we would have the individual results in a uh, six by six matrix or six by six array as the z values again, and then we could plot a surface plot. So for this, we're going to start again with ax equals plt axis projection, projection equals 3d. And then we're going to say x data equals NPA range 0 to 50 with a step size 0.1. Y data is the same. And now these are just one row of the values. So we have the values from 0 to 50 with the step size, but we just have them one time. We got to take this and uh, duplicate the rows if you want as many times as there are elements in Y data. And then we do the same for Y as well with the amount of elements in X data. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say capital X capital Y equals NP dot mesh grid. And we're going to pass X data and Y data. There you go. And we can then print X, for example, to see what X looks like. So that you get a basic idea of what we're actually doing here. And there you go, you can see that we have one row of the values, and we have multiple rows of the same values and Y is looking uh, is going to look the exact same way. And now what we're going to do is we're going to define the Z function by just saying X times Y, of course, capital X and capital Y. And then Z, of course, is also such a grid, but uh, it's going to look a little bit different. There you go. So Z is basically also such a grid with the individual results. And in order to plot this grid as a surface plot, now what we're going to do is we're going to say AX dot plot underscore surface, and we're going to plot x, y, and z, like that, and then plt dot show. There you go. And this is what we end up with. Again, I hope this is not going to lag too much. Let me just see if I'm crashing my recording. Uh, but this is, as you can see, the basic surface, I'm going to rotate it a little bit so that you get an idea of how it works. Um, yeah, that's basically it. The surface plot of x times y if x and y are the same values. Uh, this is a very simple plot. Let's go ahead and do something more fancy. Let's just uh, change this to np dot sine of x plus uh, np or actually times np dot cosine of y. Let me just see what range I chose here. Because if we choose that range, it's going to be extremely messy. So I'm going to change this here to negative 5 up until five and negative five up until five here as well with the same step size. And then we can run this hopefully and see a somewhat interesting plot. There you go. So it's all blue as you can see, but we have these little bumps here. Uh, we can also rotate this a little bit. There you go. You can see these waves that are of course produced by the sine and cosine function. Um, and what we can now do as well, this is very interesting, in my opinion, is we can add a color map to it, which basically means that the higher the values, um, or when the height changes, the color changes as well. And it changes based on the provided color map. So we can say C map equals, and then plasma. Uh, now, you can choose a different color map, you can go to the matplotlib documentation and look at the color maps. 
but I'm going to just choose plasma for now. And if we run this, you're going to see that this looks actually kind of sick. So you can see that the higher the values, the more yellow they are, and the lower the values, the more purple they are. In the middle, they're orange, pink, red, whatever. Uh, but this is actually quite a cool plot, in my opinion, uh, a basic surface plot. Now, the last thing I want to show you is how we can rotate the plot uh, programmatically. So not just with a mouse, but how we can actually set the values uh, by default. So maybe when we run the script, we don't want to see the plot from this perspective here, but we want to see it from a different perspective. Again, please don't crash. There you go. So maybe you want to see it from that perspective. And what's important here is uh, the two values that you see here on the upper right when we rotate. So when I drag this here, you can see we have this azimuth and we have the elevation. Um, this is basic. Those are basically the two values that determine the position that we look at this from. So let's just say we want to look from uh, at a top down like that. This would be azimuth of negative zero or basically zero and an elevation of roughly 90 degrees. So let's note that we had the azimuth of zero and the elevation of 90. And we can choose these two values now manually in order to, uh, to initialize the view. So we can say ax, oh, sorry, ax dot view underscore init. And here we can say asm equals zero and lf equals 90. We can then remove this. And basically, we don't change anything else. We just run this. And you're going to see that the default perspective is going to be top down. All right, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.